Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. Well, hello there. This is Michelle Spiva, your practical priestess of wisdom with today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. Join me today as I get into discussing some elements of why we need to embrace mental strengthening and wisdom agility and why uh, mindset has got to expand, you know. We're talking about the expansion pack today, y'all. So stick with me as we get into why mind flow is the new mindset. I'll see you on the flip. Hey, and thank you so much for joining me on the flip. Let's go on and get into this. So I want to go on and thank you for joining me. If you have been rocking with me for any amount of time, you already know that I have this thing with the word mindset. Now, my thing with the word mindset is not that I don't believe in mindset. More so, I think that we need to have a a carve out uh, and a, a set aside for what is required in the now. And so with mindset, mindset is uh, that work we do to get our uh, mental capacity to a point where it is what we would call healthy thinking, um, healthy um, outlook, healthy disposition, healthy self-identity and the like. Now, The reason why I have a problem with the word mindset and what it has become known in the zeitgeist is that it has not included what is needful in these trying times. Mindset, when people think about mindset, they only think about the good. Oh, you have to have the right mindset. Uh, You have to have this certain level of thinking. And I have even heard people who are big names in that particular industry talk about mindset by saying things like, I do my daily affirmations and I I program myself. Each morning, I have a list of affirmations that I say. And guess what? I totally agree with them. I don't have any problems with them doing that. Where I have a little bit of a itch, twitch, and a side eye is for the things of the mind that we have not started to embrace. And that's mental agility, mental strength, mental wisdom, uh, uh, mental uh, overhauls. Yeah, which I like to call mind flow. Now, when I was in uh, school and uh, learning about creativity, learning about uh, the studies that have been made on what makes genius, what makes creativity, uh, what makes us able to change and, and to grow and evolve, I started learning that we had this thing that we believed up into only 30 years ago? Yeah, only 30 years ago. And that was that when we became an adult and the uh, separation between the two hemispheres of the brain was complete, that that was it. The brain no longer grew. Now, on the one hand, looking at it that way, you would say, yeah, that makes sense. But studies showed that, especially that were connected to Alzheimer's, showed that An active mind helped to uh, fight the ravages of Alzheimer's, but then there was something else that was revealed. When looking 
visibly looking at a brain uh, from one point in time to another one that remained active into the older years, there were new indentations, crevices, synapses, um, neurotransmitting pathways that were formed. And this was revolutionary because we thought all those little, not we, but they thought all of those little squiggly lines when you became adult was it. They notice you learn a new language, you learn how to code, you learn how to do anything else. The more you do it, the more the new indentations would take root and they would uh, change the physical makeup and appearance of the brain. Now, y'all, let me just tell y'all, this was revolutionary. And the reason why is because it exploded what we thought the mind could do. No longer were we reciting that age-old fallacy of we only use 10% of our, our mental capacity. No, we started to learn that we use it all. We just use it in different ways, depending on what's uh, required. So now let's jump back to this whole idea of mindset. At the same time, we were having a revolution in the personal development space. And that personal development space, think and grow rich, um, the uh, quintessential uh, Carnegie, uh, how to win friends and influence others. And all of these were getting a resurgence and people were embracing them. Tony Robbins was young on the scene and doing his thing. And everybody wanted to increase their ability to attract good things their way. And so it became an idea of, are you ready? Creating a new mindset. Now, at the time, that word was apropos. It it, it was correct because you're now looking at the state of your mind where we thought, not we, let me stop saying that. I wasn't around. (laughs) They thought that your mind was set when it became uh, when you became an adult and this major uh process moving you from a teenage mind to an adult mind had happened with the separation of the hemispheres okay but now they're telling you that whoa you can update and upgrade your state of mind and so they started looking at change your mindset change your mind and all of this and it worked it did. I am like I said, I'm not poo-pooing on that at all. But then we 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 have about 25 years of this, and we start moving into uh 20 years of this, and we start moving into uh the the new wars, if they will. Now I can only speak from uh the US side because this is the only side I know, y'all. So if you live in other areas, I'm gonna ask you to do more than my average listener and uh try to put this on top of what you uh had going on in your country. Okay. But I thank you for listening to me and sticking with me and rocking with me. Love you, boo. But getting back to what I was saying. So you've got uh, this new mindset because we figured out that, oh, you can you can change your mind by doing these things. So lo and behold, people start creating little programming uh, statements because, you know, you can program yourself, of course. Right. So they call them affirmations and they uh, attach affirmations, not only with the programming of recitation of those, but they enforce it uh, by getting into the background, the back uh, running operation systems of the mind by encouraging people to write and to journal so that as you write these affirmations and as you journal out all of the stuff, we get words like brain dump and all of those start to come into the zeitgeist to take on new meaning that people embrace it and people start to get some real changes. And so they've proven that it works. So lo and behold, with anything, as it takes off, uh, it starts to become part of the known, uh, the, the, the known part of how we, we work. And thus, mindset becomes mindset. It becomes this quintessential point where you get to positive thinking and self-reinforcement of identity and clarity of thought and mind and all of that, right? And so it becomes this idea of 
great thinking, you know, getting doing away with stinking thinking, as I've been guilty of saying. And thus, people are like, if I just have a great mindset, if I just get into my frequency and I get into my good place where nothing can harm me and I, I, I understand myself and all of that, I'm good. Well, life happens, y'all. It does. And what ends up happening is, is we then start to see how the holes are being poked because mindset is not doing all the things that the mindsetters said it should do. And people are starting to figure out what in the world, what is going on? So lo and behold, you have people pioneering like Mihai Chink Sink Mihai who talk about Zen and getting into, you guessed it, the flow. Now, the flow, as it pertains to what um, this, this quintessential work was working with, was talking about getting into a certain state and trying to maintain it for as long as possible to do a uh, highly specific and uh, advanced work. And that was okay. But because mind flow at the time, was not known uh, to be for the masses. People just thought it was getting into the zone. And so it got regulated over into that little area of expertise where the experts live, where if you were talking about anything to do with flow and mind, oh, you had to be an expert and you were getting into your zone. And I think we missed a great opportunity during that time because now, We need mind flow more than ever, but mind flow has grown up and put on its big boy and girl undergarments and is ready to go. So now, thank you for letting me get into that first portion. Let's move into the second portion of what I want to talk about, about why mind flow is the new mindset. Okay, And it's because there's a great opportunity to get in now and embrace it so that it can help. Now, I first want to say this. You need a good mindset. I'm not trying to tell you don't have one. But understand that mindset is just that. It is a programmed state of being that you get yourself to. It's kind of like when you are trying to uh, prepare a a big meal and you get everything in place. They call it maison plat, everything in its place. You assemble everything, you do all the prep work, and you have the great makings. And then you put something together. But what happens when either the oven breaks and you've got to cook it on the on the stove or or one of your things is missing? Mindset works when all of the elements are plugged in a certain way. But let any major component of what you need for that recipe of mindset to to go awry and you got problems. All right? And so when I was thinking about whether I wanted to talk about this need for us to have mind flow in these days, I wrote down an analogy. So if you will, permit me to go through my little analogy, okay? So think of mindset and mind flow like components of your bank account. So say, for instance, you go to a bank and you want to get a loan from the bank. Doesn't matter what the loan is for, but you want to get a loan. And you have a bank account that is in good standing, You have a a modest savings account and uh, it's got a a little bit of money in it. You pay your bills, you you save your money and you're looking okay. You go in thinking, okay, well, certainly they're going to allow me to take this loan out. Certainly. You go in, you fill out the application and they start asking you weird things like, what are your assets? Uh, List your liabilities. Uh, Do you have any um, reoccurring royalties, residuals? Uh, What is your stock portfolio? Do you own any portions of a business? And you've been doing what you're supposed to, but you might not be able to fill out all that stuff. You sit down in front of the banker and you're like, well, surely they're going to give me a loan. I I mean, come on now. I have to uh, update my my kitchen and my my air condition, uh, my central air and heat. I I got stuff that I have to do. And they say, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to approve your loan. And if you get a good banker and you ask them why, 
what are they going to tell you? They're going to tell you some kind of bunk like either uh, you don't have uh, your your debt to income ratio isn't uh, big enough. Or if they're real honest, they're going to say we don't see enough of an exercised understanding of cash flow to grant you this loan. OK, so what they're saying in essence is you've got a really good mindset. You have done really well on getting yourself to a good place. But what you don't have is you don't have mind flow to help strengthen your mindset. So in other words, think of your mindset as a savings account. And think of your mind flow as income received from uh, your business, from royalties, from rental payments, um, from paybacks on land leasing or whatever that is, okay? And say, for instance, a big pandemic comes and the world shuts down Mm -hmm. and you're not able to work your normal job, okay? So you've got a pretty good savings, and you're able to sustain. You're like, I, I've done what they've said. I've got my my three to six months worth of savings set aside, so we're good. But yet and still, you're looking at that savings and it's dwindling each month because your primary is gone. Your primary uh, uh, job is maybe gone. And each month, you're like, okay, we're good, we're good, but we, we, we need to hurry up and get back to work. Everything needs to return to normal. And what ends up happening is, is because you had that set aside, but you did not have a constant inflow of cash from outside elements that don't require for you to work. Eventually, the savings is depleted, especially when they tell you that we're possibly going to be two years out before we get back to any kind of semblance of what we had before. And that is what the bank already knows. When they don't even need a pandemic, what they do is we don't care about what you set aside. We care about how you flow. They want to know the skill of how good are you with managing your flow in good times and in bad. When I started to finally figure this out, I was like, duh, it was staring me right in the face. That it is all about, for them, it's about your cash flow. That's why they ask. Most people think it's about the liabilities and the assets like I used to. So, you know, gathering crap and stuff and like, well, this is an asset. And then they start asking you about liquidity. Well, how long does it take for you to liquidize or liquidate this if something happens? And I was getting all wrapped up into that when they weren't asking that. They were wanting to see how much of a flow can you generate and man- maintain? How adaptable are you? Okay. And ding, 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 ding. That's when the lights went off. And that's when wisdom started encouraging me that I needed to strengthen my mind. I needed to strengthen my ability to tap into wisdom, to use that. Yes, continue doing all the mindset stuff. But your mindset is only as good as the times are as you are used to them being. But let something unexpected happen. And then we got trouble right here in Union City, (laughs) okay? So shout out to the music man. So when I started looking at that, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And so what I'm trying to say, and thank you for getting getting to this point with me, what I am trying to propose to you is that yes, you continue to daily program yourself so that your ability to produce good thoughts, your ability to produce optimism for a bright outlook for your life, for yourself and for others, please do that. But in addition, please consider increasing your mind flow because that is what is required and has been required, but it's just showing itself because everybody is having a similar uh, unexpected event, massive unexpected event happen at the same time. And so think of, if you if you can't remember anything else, think of our world right now. You are in the middle of an ocean, okay? 
And I heard somewhere, I don't remember exactly where, but I heard somewhere that without a compass or without a skill set of using your surroundings to give you your bearings, you know, to navigate, without any of that, we tend to walk around in circles. I did not, I was like, what? Yes, without a map or a navigation tool of some sort or the skill to use a a trademark, I mean, excuse me, landmarks and the like, we tend to walk around in a circle. So think of mindset as that walking around in a circle (laughs) because it's what you know and left to your own devices, you will try to continue to keep yourself at that certain level in your ability to think and process things that are healthy and that are pleasant and that are good. Now, think of mind flow as that direction, that North Star, that ability to get from point A to point B. And let's drop all of this in the middle of the ocean. So mindset will, uh, give you the unction to stay afloat and keep swimming. You might be in circles. You might be going in circles, but you'll still have the drive to survive and to keep swimming, even though the sharks are there. Even though uh, all this stuff is showing up, you'll, you'll, you'll try to keep swimming. What mind flow will do Its mind flow will take into account the sharks. It will take into account uh, the stars at night or uh, the way the tides move. And it will start to allow you to work with your environment to figure out a way to start swimming in one direction to get you to a new point. And that is because mind flow is set up for you to actively move in trying times. Where mindset keeps you in a good mood, mind flow helps you to increase your adaptability. And so I want to give you a few little practical things uh, before we go so that you can start identifying how do I strengthen my mind flow? So well, the first thing is, is I want you to start looking at areas where you find yourself wandering. And the reason why I want you to do that is because those are the very areas that you need to identify so that you can start getting into the flow. Shout out to me, hi, chink, sink me high to teach yourself and strengthen your skill of finding and giving yourself direction. Because a lot of times when you're wandering, it does not mean that you're in a depressive state. It just means that You don't have any direction and the status of your mind might be good, but without a direction with that status, eh, you're going to be wasting time. So find those areas where you find yourself wandering, floundering, directionalist, no clarity. Mind flow helps with all of that. And once you start identifying those, consciously and actively seek out patterns or ways or plans to get some kind of direction. And don't try to swim the entire Atlantic Ocean. Start in your in your backyard pool and say, I'm going to swim from this end to that end without stopping. Choose something where you can get a win and start to teach yourself how to how to mentally flow. And the reason why I'm, I'm talking about directions and flow is because Flow makes you mentally agile and adaptable to unexpected changes in your environment. It makes it where you don't get knocked down when something unexpected happens. I'm going to tell you so many times when I was a therapist, I would have people who were the biggest folks when it came to mindset and something would happen unexpected and it would ravage their lives where They would question everything and they would get so despondent and and turned around to where it was threatening to take them out. And we had to build them back up. And if I were talking to them today, I would have taken a different route. And that would have been to tell them, you know, your mindset might have taken a hit, but let's build up your mind flow and then your mindset will benefit as well. And so the next thing to do 
is to start looking at your viewpoint on things. I am talking about everything. I want you to look at how you feel about your culture, your surroundings, uh, what what you need to be able to handle the uncertainties, how you have handled things that came out of left field. How do you handle rejection? How do you handle um, sudden uh, boons? And how do you handle sudden losses? It all matters. One of the biggest ways that I have seen for people to update their ability to understand and change and make their viewpoints malleable or changeable is to travel. Now, there are a lot of people who have this skill and the biggest ones are people who have been in the military. You see, when you've had opportunity to go and look at various different cultures, your mind flow peaks up because you're forced whether you want to believe it or not, you're forced to consider someone else's viewpoint as valid, no matter how different it is from yours. And when you keep doing that for a certain amount of years, especially in those formative years of being in your 20s or so, it causes you to be mentally adaptable and uh, uh, flexible, agile, adroit, if you will, so that no matter what comes, you're able to adapt. If you're used to sleeping in, in, in uh, the plushness of a soft bed or whatever the dream mattress is for you with the right temperature, but then you're, you're used to having to go and sleep on a, a, a dirt packed floor uh, with no AC in the middle of the desert, you're going to be fine wherever. And thus your viewpoint of what happens to you is able to expand and change because you've built that skill. The next thing is, is how do you deal with catastrophe? So the first thing is, and I found for me, because I'm trying to give y'all some shortcut cuts here to embrace your mind flow, is to quickly re- realize what you don't know and have the strength to say, I don't know. That is one of the biggest things that will help you to get into mind flow because mindset, it doesn't mean to, but it kind of sort of gets people to the point where it's hard for them to admit when they're in a gray area, when they don't know, or when they're scared. And you can't afford that when catastrophe comes. Another thing about when the unexpected comes and you're trying to deal with it to increase your mind flow is to expand your self-knowledge. Be willing to go into the dark areas. Be willing to get objective. Be willing to seek out advice from others about things that they've observed about you that rub them the wrong way. Be willing to face the criticism and understand from their viewpoint how they might perceive you that way. Do not try to defend yourself. Take it in. It's going to hurt. It's going to cause you to question some things, but that's going to cause you to expand your uh, self-knowledge. And then the next thing is, is when things happen and you know when things happen, whether you have a strong mind flow or not, because you start questioning everything about yourself and you start crumbling and going into the corner and getting, getting still and not being able to move. Embrace and and update your ability to stay in the flow with your mind by seeking to become better able to understand different viewpoints and different ways of life. Uh, Be able to understand both sides or all sides of an argument to the point where you could advocate for each and every one to the same amount. Be able to stand boldly in the middle and have a 360 degree uh, angle of what everyone is saying. What that will do is it will make you a better negotiator. It will make you diplomatic in the way you're able to survive through new environments. And it will increase your adaptability quotient. We've talked about that so much uh, by leaps and bounds. And then when you encounter these abrupt changes in your life, as I've said before, Mind your viewpoint, fix it, update it, update your belief systems, your behaviors, and even your philosophies and goals to adjust quickly. Do not rail and try to box and fight against the wind to command it to go back to what's comfortable for you. Instead, learn the lessons that the environment is willing to give you. 
instead of what you're trying to impose on your environment. Because mindset works when you're in the environment that you taught yourself for it to work in. But when things change, not if, when things change, and that's really the only guarantee we have, you need some good mind flow. You need that ability to know how to strengthen your mental understanding. You need how to mentally adapt to things so that you spend the least amount of time being disoriented, disgruntled, or just flat out angry because your pain has increased because of the unknown. And the next and last thing that I want to say about increasing practical ways to increase your mind flow is to look at the areas that cause you pain. We spend the majority of our life trying to negotiate, lessen, and a flat out avoid pain. People have even come to the realization that pleasure is simply the lowest amount of pain. Yeah, that there that pleasure is really not in and of itself a thing. It is just articulated by how much pain it doesn't have. So when you start looking at what causes you pain, how do you work through it? And do you change and grow and and negotiate with it? Or do you uh, try to box with it? And when you lose, you crumble. So those are some questions and some things that I wanted to put before you to embrace mind flow. So guess what, y'all? My time is up. I thank you for yours. This has been Michelle Spivey, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.